Welcome back to Crafts Go Bloom. My name is Krista, and today we are going to be making this crochet no sew turkey. Now, all of these feathers are all crocheted on. We're going to tie on the waddle on the feet before we finish, and you will have a cute little plushie for Thanksgiving. Um, he can sit like on the edge of something and his little feet hang off, so he makes kind of a cute decoration. And as I said, this is no sew. So the first things that we're going to be working on in this pattern are making all the parts so that we have them ready to go as we make the actual bird. And the way that this pattern is going to work is I'm going to pop the line that we're working on across the screen and you'll be able to pause the video at any point and work on whatever it is that we're working on. With the exception of the feet, I'm just going to walk you through how to make the feet because the pattern is such a dense body of text. It's not like a typical crochet pattern that's written out in abbreviations. So let's get started with our supply list. First, we've got our basic crochet supplies. I've got scissors. I have a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, 12 millimeter safety eyes. And then I have two crochet hooks today because I'm actually going to be using two different ones just because that's what makes sense for the yarns that I'm going to be using. So I will point that out when I get to the yarn later. But I will be using Bernat blanket yarns with a size 6 hook and a size 6.5. Just use whatever hook size you would normally use for your yarn. And off camera I also have a giant bag of stuffing. I use polyfill and it's just a giant crinkly bag so I just don't show it on camera but you will also need that at the end. For the main body we're going to be using Bernat Blanket in taupe. Now I had to order this off of Amazon and so you may be able to find it there. It is difficult to find color and you can see it's a little bit different than the example I have done. This one was made with Bernat Blanket Ogo yarn that is discontinued. So I can't get this exact same brown, but I've made it in this color before and it turns out nice. I've also uh, seen this made with like a lighter brown color and that turns out nice as well. For some of the feathers on the back, I'm using Bernat Blanket in Crimson. For two more of those feathers, I'm going to be using Bernat Blanket in Orange Leaf. Today for the beak, the feet, and some of the feathers, I'm using Bernat Baby Blanket in Mellow Yellow. First, we're going to start by making the feet of this turkey. So I have one of them done for you already so you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to set that off to the side and then we're going to go through the steps of making one together. And as I mentioned, I'm not going to be placing this pattern across the screen for the feet because it would just take up the entire screen. So for this part, you will have to just pay attention and pause and re-listen. So what we're going to start with is our yellow color for the feet and we're going to make a slip knot. And if you've never done this before, I wrap it around my fingers and pinch that sort of and pull through the center. And then tighten that up. And we are going to chain five. And to chain, you're just going to yarn over and pull it through. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We're going to start by slip stitching into the second chain from the hook. So skip this first V and go into the second one. And we're going to do a slip stitch, which is just bringing up the yarn and pulling it through what's on the hook. And then we're going to do that one more time. And that is actually creating this part of the foot that sticks off over here. And then we're going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do two slip stitches. So we've got one. And then slip stitch back into this kind of beginning area where you slip stitched into to make that first kind of toe or talon. Then we're going to do it again. We're going to chain two. Slip stitch in that second chain from the hook. And slip stitch once more back into that center spot. And now we've just got two more chains up the, the leg. And we're going to slip stitch into both of those. 
and then chain one to finish. And then I like to cut an even tail for this. And the reason for that is because later on we're going to be tying it into the bird, into the body, so that we don't have to do any sewing. And I want to make sure that I've just got enough of a tail on both of those. Now, right now, while you've just made this, go ahead and really take a look at this. This is the top, what I use as the top, and the bottom is going to be a lot more bumpy. And if I hold it like that, you should be able to see this is very flat and we've got all those bumps on the back. And so that is how I like to have the feet. They will um, kind of curl a little if you want them to. So you could do them the other direction, but if you want it to look like mine, I'm going to be doing it this way. So completely move those out of your way and let's get to work on the feathers. As you can see here, I've already made a lot of the feathers in advance. You're going to want to make two yellow, two orange, and then three red. So I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to make one in red. Now all of these steps are going to be the same for every single feather. You're just going to be making them in different colors. And we're going to have seven total feathers. If you accidentally make three in yellow and only two in red, it's going to be okay. Um, or if you'd just like to change the colors of the feathers, the pattern is going to show you how to add seven of them total. So row one for the feathers, we're going to chain nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And in row two, starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to single crochet eight. And since we haven't looked at a single crochet yet, let's go over that. First, you're going to insert your hook, and then you're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops, and that's a single crochet. And that's a single crochet, whether you're working back and forth in a row like this, or if you're working in the round when we go to make the body of the turkey. So we've got two, four, six, eight, and then you're going to completely turn this around and crochet over this tail and do eight single crochets going back down. And then eight. And then when you get to the end, you're going to chain one just to finish off and then let's cut this tail. Now I've left all my tails on here for now but we're actually going to weave all of these in. So this is the tail that I just got done crocheting with. So I don't want to just cut that one off but this tail that we crocheted over if you flip that over you can see that going through the stitches in the back that's already been crocheted in for eight stitches, so that one's fine to just go ahead and cut. If you're having trouble seeing this, which is the bottom, and this, which is the top that's rounded, it also curves up here at the top. But just in case you, you're still having trouble with that, go ahead and you can leave this tail so that you know which end to crochet over when we get there. But I'm going to go ahead and weave all of these in and cut them off. That's one done. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of them. Here are all my finished feathers, and you're definitely going to want to pause the video and keep going back and rewatching that until you have that down and you have seven feathers. The next thing we're going to be working on is the waddle, and if you're unfamiliar, that's this red part right here. And this is going to be a small piece that we do, and then we're going to set that to the side and tie it on at the end. And we're going to start by chaining four. One, two, three, four. And then starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to slip stitch two. So we're going to slip stitch in that one. We're going to slip stitch into the next one. And then in the final space, we're going to single crochet four all into the same space. One, 
two, three, and four. And then we're going to chain one to finish off and cut that tail to be about the same size, pull that through, and we'll end up tying that on once we get far enough into the pattern. So set this aside with your feet and feathers and grab the brown. You will also want to grab your stitch marker for this. And this is the part of the pattern where I'm going to be switching to my size six and a half hook. My Bernat Blanket Taupe yarn is a little bit more round instead of flat like some of these other yarns. This one can get pretty thin compared to this one. So I'm going to switch to my size six hook and we're going to get started. For round one, we're going to make a magic ring and to make a magic ring, we're going to grab the yarn here with our thumb, wrap it around the back of your fingers and then pinch it, wrap it around again and grab it with my pinky here. Then put your hook under the first loop and grab that second one and then twist it. Now you're going to grab that yarn that you're holding with your pinky and help hold on to it and pull through. And then kind of untangle everybody here and you've got your magic ring. If you've never done that before, definitely back up and watch it again. I um, was very confused the first time I saw it and now I can just do it without even looking down. So for round one, we're going to do seven single crochets into the magic ring. And for a single crochet, you're just going to reach in and grab the yarn, yarn over and pull through two, just like we did before, except this time around, we're going inside of that magic circle. So we've got three, four, five, six, and seven. And then when you get to the end of that, if this is twisted, I like to pull that tail out and hold on and pull that. Do not pull as hard as you possibly can because you can snap your yarn. Even working with something as strong and as thick as Bernat, if you try hard enough, you are going to, to break that. So I just want to pull it until it's tight. And then in our last stitch of the round, we're going to put our stitch marker so that we know where to stop next time around. Up next for round two, we're going to increase seven times for a total of 14 stitches. And an increase, if you're not familiar, is just doing two single crochets into the same space. So if we had seven before in round one, we're going to do two in each one. Now we've got 14. Then remove your stitch marker to do the last stitch of the round and then make sure that you put it back in for the last stitch of round two so that we know where to stop next time. For round three, we're going to increase and then single crochet one. So we're going to start by, and we're going to repeat that pattern seven times. So we're going to start by doing an increase in the first stitch. And then just one single crochet in the next stitch and then keep reading, repeating that around until you have 21 stitches. For rounds four, five, and six, we're going to single crochet 21 around for a total of 21 stitches. So just put one single crochet in each spot until you have 21 and do that three times for rounds four, five, and six. And I'll meet you back here when I'm finished. As you can see, I finished rounds four, five, and six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six with 21 stitches in each of them. And up next for round seven, we're going to start by single crocheting 10. And in that 11th stitch, we're going to need to grab our yellow so that we can add the beak in. So we're going to actually back up a little bit there and do our color change in the 10th single crochet. 
And so if you've never done this before, let me completely back up for you. Stick your hook in, bring up a loop, and then grab the color that you're changing to and pull that through. And now you've got that tenth single crochet. I'm going to drop the yellow and hold that back here out of my way. And I'm going to be working over the brown so that it's a little easier to pick up next time. We want to switch back to it. And in this 11th stitch, we're going in the front loops only. And so the way you can find that, if you're not sure, is to just go ahead and stick your hook in. And then there are two loops on your hook and you want the front one only. So go ahead and hook that in there. Actually, no, we got to back up. <laughs> We're going to yarn over because the first thing we're going to be doing is a half double. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through all three. And then we're going to be doing a double crochet in the same stitch. So you're going to yarn over, remember to only go through the front loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then one more half double and you're going to yarn over and then pull up a loop, but instead of yarning over with the yellow, you're going to yarn over with the brown and pull that through, and that's going to finish off our beak. And then you're going to keep going and do 10 more single crochets. For round eight, we're going to start off by single crocheting 10. I've single crocheted my 10 and I made it around to the beak. Now in that 11th stitch, you're going underneath the beak to find where you went in the front loop of that stitch and you're going to go behind it and just do, whoops, you're going to go behind it and do one single crochet and you make sure you're grabbing the brown yarn. We've got this yellow tail here, just pull that down and we'll get to that at the end of this round. And just go back to that next brown stitch and that's going to give our beak like a little bit of a, a cup. It's going to look like it sticks out then. So you do 10 single crochets, do one behind the beak and finish with 10 more single crochets. Okay, I've just finished my 10 single crochets in round eight and I'm going to pull my yarn out just for a second and go back and deal with this beak. Now, if you did it exactly the way I did, you're going to have these two tails sticking out one side, but we still need to cut one of them. And once you have those cut, I'm just going to go ahead and tie these in a couple of knots just to really secure them and not worry about them coming out the sides or anything like that. Then I'm just going to tuck that in there and we'll move on to round nine and just ignore all of these tails. Now that we've got that beak all cleaned up, let's move on to round nine. And for round nine, we're going to need an orange feather, a red feather, and then a yellow feather. To start off with, we're going to single crochet two. And then we're going to single crochet two over an orange feather. Now, the way I do this is this is the top of my feather and here's where it's cupped. So we're going to crochet over this and I'm going to fold it down this way. And when we do that, the feathers end up sticking up like this and curving in. And I've also seen somebody make one where they did the feathers this way and they were all sticking out. So it's up to you. They both look fine in the end. I'm going to do mine this way, but um, you can have them go either way. I just like how this makes them stick straight up. But if you turn them around, they're going to fan out more, a little more like a turkey, honestly. So to crochet over this feather, all we're going to do is we, we basically have two rows, like two ends of these rows where we did those eight single crochets. So you could stick your hook on this side and you could stick your hook on this side. So we're going to start on this side and I like to get that feather on my hook and then find my stitch. And then we're just going to single crochet like normal. And then one more to go over the other side of that feather. And that feather is done. Next, we're going to single crochet 13. 
Once you've done your 13 single crochets, the next thing we're going to do is single crochet over a red feather. And we're going to do that the exact same way. Got one in the first part of the feather, and we're going to do a second one over that. Then you're going to single crochet one. Now we only have one stitch left in this round, so you want to take out your stitch marker and we're going to do one single crochet over the first part of that yellow feather. And that's going to technically be the last stitch of this round, so that's where you're going to want to put your stitch marker. And then technically, moving on to round 10, you're going to do that second stitch over this feather. And this yellow yarn is a little bit tough for me. It's not as smooth as my other yarns, so I've got to really kind of push my hook in there. We finished up our yellow feather, and now to make... We're going to start working on the point of this tail. It's a little hard to see with all these feathers, but if we look at it completely upside down, it's not quite round. It's got a little point on the back end here. So we're going to start making that in round 10 here. And we're going to chain three skip over the first chain on the hook and single crochet in the next two chains. Then we're going to single crochet again in the spot where that feather went in to attach this. Then we're going to single crochet five. Next we're going to be working on these little wings on the side and to do that we're going to do five double crochets in the front loop only of the next stitch. So make sure all five of them are going in the same place and that all five of them are always going into the front loop only of the stitch. And there's our fifth. Then we're going to single crochet nine. And we're going to repeat the exact same thing for the second wing over here. We're going to do five double crochets all in the same stitch, making sure that they are all going in the front loop only. And then we're going to single crochet eight to finish off of this round. So we've got one, two, three. The fourth one is going to go where the stitch marker is. And then we're just going to take that out and set it down. We're going to uh, move our stitch marker in this round. So we've got four, five. The sixth one is going kind of across there. And then the last two are going to be going up that chain that we made at the beginning of this round. And that is the new end of the round, and we're going to move our stitch marker to that last stitch there. There we go. Now let's stop and pull out our working yarn and go ahead and add our eyes. Now I'm using 12 millimeter safety eyes today. And I would not suggest using these for children who are still putting toys in their mouth. Anyone three and under or anyone still um, chewing on anything, these could still technically pop out. If you've got a kid who is young like that, I would suggest just using some yarn and making eyes. So I'm going to stick these in. And they go between rounds six and seven, about four stitches apart, but... Mainly you want to make sure that they're centered on the beak. If you have three stitches or five stitches instead of four in between, that's okay. You really just want to make sure it looks centered. So I'm happy with how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and stick these backs on. And if you've never done this before, you're going to hold on to your eye and push it through. 
and then push this down until it clicks. And then we'll do the same thing for this eye. And next we're going to tie on the waddle before we get any farther, so we're going to need that as well. Now the waddle is going to get tied over round eight. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we want it to be as close to this beak as possible. So I'm going to use my hook to pull this through. I'm going to go right here next to the beak at the top of round eight. And the waddle goes this direction, the fat part at the top, skinny part at the bottom. And I'm just going to hook that and pull it through. And then same thing down here. I'm going to pull up my hook closer to the bottom, at the bottom of round eight and closer to the beak. And then we're going to pull that tail through. And then situate it where it needs to be. And I'm pulling us tight in the back because I want to make sure when I tie it really tight, what direction is the waddle going to go? And that's how you will adjust if you put it in the wrong hole up here. We don't want it to go sideways. We don't want it to go that way. We don't want it sticking up. We want it to just hang straight down. So test it by just pulling your yarn pretty tight and making sure you like where it is before you tie a couple of knots here. And we can kind of stuff these other tails up in there out of our way just so it looks a little cleaner so you can see what you're doing. But we're just going to leave those tails inside. And get that all tied up and stuff those in there. And we're starting to look like a turkey. All right, now we're going to go on to round 11. And we are actually going to need all of the rest of the feathers. So for starters, we're going to single crochet one. And then we're going to single crochet two over a yellow feather. And I like to push that up my hook and then go find exactly where I'm headed so that I make sure I don't skip any stitches or accidentally go back into the one I just came out of. Then we're going to single crochet one and then we're going to single crochet two over a red feather. You want to make sure that you're pulling all of your stitches tight when you're crocheting over these things. Sometimes they kind of wiggle around and you don't want that to be where you start to get gaps in your actual body of the turkey. So that's why I push it on there, make sure I get the right stitch, but then I'm cinching everything down as I go along as well. Now we're going to single crochet three to get to the over to the wing. And then we're going to single crochet one in that back loop only under the wing that we left alone when we were single crocheting those in the front loop only. So you're going to do one single crochet under there and then you're going to skip the wing entirely. So we've got one, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to go into this next stitch and we're going to single crochet nine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, move that waddle out of our way, six, seven, eight and nine and then repeat the same thing over here we're going to do one single crochet in that back loop only and then we're going to skip these five doubles one two three four and five and we're going to find the next stitch on the other side of the wing and we're going to single crochet one 
Next, we're going to single crochet two over an orange feather. When you're single crocheting over these, you want to make sure that you're going through like an entire single crochet stitch. Don't just grab one loop or your feathers are going to flop all over the place. then single crochet one and now we're going to do two over that last red feather and it can start to get a little tricky to see what's going on in here so i just slow on down and feel for that stitch and make sure that i'm in the right spot just kind of trusting the process. It can get a little crazy. Next, we're going to single crochet too. Um, but if you just keep pressing on, it will come together, I promise. All right, you made it through all of the feathers, guys. Now, for rounds 12 and 13, you're just going to single crochet one in each stitch around, and you'll have a total of 27 stitches. So do that for 12 and 13. And then I will meet you back here with that finished. In round 14, we're going to start with four invisible decreases. And the way you make an invisible decrease is by going in the front loops only of the next two loops, yarning over and pulling through, yarn over and pull through two. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And as you make these, I just went into this loop here, and so I'm going to start cr single crocheting in this next stitch, but it can be tempting to come in here because you have a little bit of an extra space. So you really need to make sure you're counting your stitches on this. And we're going to single crochet three. And then we're going to invisible decrease four again. Then single crochet four. And invisible decrease three to finish out the round. Once you're finished with round 14, go ahead and pull out that working yarn and grab your feet and we're going to attach those to the front. All right, I'm going to try my best to get this turkey to sit nice and flat so you guys can see what I'm up to. Now we're going to be tying these on between rounds 13 and 14 and you need to do it before you do any more crocheting or you're going to have to sew them on. And we're going to pull over a full stitch and leave four stitches in between. And the way I like to figure this out is by going straight down from the eye. So I think that one's gonna look good. Don't need that fuzz though. And try again here. So if I go straight down, let's, let's start on this side. <laughs> Let's go straight down from this eye because I don't have the waddle in my way. And then we're just going to pull that through on one side and go to the other side of the stitch and pull through. And then we can count over one two, three, four, and yeah, I think that's going to be straight down from the eye. And before I tie anything, I'm going to want to put both of these feet in just like I'm doing where I'm just pulling the yarn through the back and it's kind of holding it in place because I want to make sure that they are centered and looking nice together. And I was talking and I put this foot on upside down. So we also want to make sure 
that you've got them both going the same way at least. So then I'm just going to pull them kind of tight here and make sure that I like where they are. It can be a little bit difficult to see what it's going to be like without stuffing, so I'm trying to kind of flatten the top of this so that it's as even as possible. And the waddle kind of throws me off sometimes because it's a little bit hard to see what center is, so if that's a problem for you, you can always use your hook and place that straight up and down and I think we're looking pretty good. So now we're just going to flip this over like everything else and we're going to tie these in a couple knots. You want to make sure that you're tying this foot and you're tying this foot and you're not trying to tie them across and getting the wrong tails because that might pull your project and give it kind of a lump. Now you're going to want to add your stuffing and then we're going to do our last round but you may need to add a little bit more stuffing later because right now it's hard to get the stuffing to stay in this little pop out of the tail there's just kind of nothing to hold it in so you'll want to stuff everything that you can now and then keep some stuffing for later. And as you can see here, I don't quite have enough stuffing up in here, but we've got to create some more stitches for us to have like a, a spot that's actually going to hold it in. So there's not really any stuffing in here. And let's move on to round 15. For round 15, we're going to invisible decrease eight times and then single crochet one. Now that I finished round 15, I've got something to hold the stuffing in there, so I'm going to go ahead and add more. Alright, I think I'm pretty happy with how much stuffing I've got in there. And that was actually our last round, so I'm going to go ahead and chain one to finish off. And then we're going to want to cut a longer than usual tail to close up the bottom here. So we'll pull that through, take out our stitch marker because we're done with those, and get this yarn on the tapestry needle. Now to close up the bottom of this we're going to weave through the front loops only of that last round and give it a little bit of a tug as you're going along to close this up. If sometimes when I wait and I weave through all of these and then I try to pull it closed at the very end, it can snap my yarn. And when you are this far into a turkey, it's pretty frustrating when the yarn completely snaps. So I just pull it a tiny bit each time and then we're gonna pull it one more time at the end to tighten it up. All right, you want to make sure that you can't see that hole showing anymore. And then I'm going to go up through my project, I'm trying to stick as close as I can to the yarn when I'm pushing my needle through so that I'm not actually going through that stuffing. I'm just squeaking along the edge. And then I'm going to start weaving through these stitches to weave my end in. And when I pull on this, I want to make sure that I'm just barely pulling. That I'm not pulling the project tighter. I'm just hiding the yarn in there. So I'm going to go probably all the way around and do this. And I just find that that really secures the end for me. All 
All right, well, I was gonna stop sewing after that anyways. So we're just gonna pull that last little bit, get those little stuffing fuzzies off that end up everywhere, and cut that close, but don't cut into the project. You also end up with that little bit of yarn fuzz that you always have to get out of there to make sure that you can't see that. It's completely hidden. And then we are done with a turkey just in time for American Thanksgiving. And I've got a little bit of a size difference because of the different yarns that I used. And I think that's working out just fine. And we did it, guys. We are all done. So leave a comment and let me know how your turkey turned out and what yarn you used. I hope you had as much fun as I did hanging out today, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!